Hey guys, welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna be sanitizing our fresh water tank, getting set for boondocking. The first thing we did was hook up a drinking water hose. Because we have people on both sides of us, both sites are occupied, we had to snake a drinking water hose underneath the RV to connect it to our fresh water tank. I didn't want to connect multiple hoses, so I tried to see if a 25 foot hose was enough and it actually was enough to snake it underneath the RV and hook it up to the fresh water tank. So that was amazing and awesome on that part. On this side, we have the hose splitter. This one is going into our city water connection. This one is going into our fresh water tank. As soon as the fresh water tank fills up, I'm gonna turn off the city water connection and I'm gonna turn off the fresh water tank the hose going to the fresh water tank. Once the fresh water tank fills and I cut off the city water connection and the water leading to the fresh water tank, I'm gonna go inside and I cut on the water pump. Now, when you're putting water into your fresh water tank, you wanna monitor the water going in because this is not securely in. This can just come right out. So you always wanna monitor that. When the water is full, you're gonna see it coming out of there, or you can just go inside and check your fresh water tank levels with the sensor. Here's the sensor, and you check it by pressing the fresh water tank. As you can see, it says full, but it's not full. It's the water passing through the sensor, which makes it think it's full. As you saw, pressing the sensor for the fresh water tank while the water's going in is not reliable because as the water's going in, it's going over that sensor, which is giving you a force reading of full. This water is still filling up. The only way to tell is when you're outside and you'll see it coming out. That's how you know it's full. There is a safety vent in the fresh water tank where it won't overfill. It will just come spilling out. I'll show you the vent holes now. If your water tank is full, it's gonna come out of here. But let's say you have a problem with your city water connection filling up your fresh water tank. You're gonna have this cap on here. So the water's not gonna come out of here. It's gonna come out of these vents where you're gonna see the water spilling out where you know you have a problem. We have a 40 gallon tank. So it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to fill This is how it looks when it's full. So the water will sprinkle out when it's full and it will go to the level that it's supposed to be. But we cut the hose off and let the small amount of water drip out. So now we're gonna close the cap. Step I didn't show you is that I cut off the city water connection and the connection that led to the fresh water tank to stop the water from coming in. But I'll show it to you now. As you can see from the spigot, both of the terminals are turned off so there's no water coming into the RV. So now we're gonna go in and cut on the water pump. Now, while you're draining the water, you're gonna wanna have your great tank valve open because you have to flush the tank. That means you're gonna empty out the fresh water tank. So you're gonna have to have a valve open to collect the water. I'm sweating because it's 90 degrees outside. So now we're in the bathroom. You cut on your water pump. Once your water pump is on, you turn on the faucet. Now remember, you have to have that great tank valve open so that you can empty out the tank. Remember, it's 40 gallons. You can wash dishes with this water if you want. I don't recommend drinking it until you are able to flush out that gray water tank a couple of times. I'm gonna wash out these last couple of dishes while the tank is emptying. You'll see the tank becoming empty once the water starts spitting. So you wanna cut the water off when that happens, cut off your water pump, and then refill the fresh water tank. It feels real good sitting here in the AC. I'm sweating a lot. You know, being a first responder, I'm used to sweating. My wife just reminded me, don't wipe the sweat in your eyes. And she knows that's one way to get an illness when you're out in the field, is wiping the sweat and going into your eyes or your mouth or your nose. So I'm just used to letting it drip. So excuse my sweatiness here. That's the water there draining out. Sometimes you'll hear the pump cut on and off or sometimes you don't hear it if you got a good pump you're probably not going to hear anything the kids are in the room as relaxed as they can be watching their television 
and everybody said hi. He was like, oh, daddy's recording. He's doing something over there. Another thing that I forgot to mention is when you're draining the water from your fresh water tank, you want to turn off your electric heater because you don't want to burn out your heating elements when the water goes too low. Now it took 10 minutes to fill up that fresh water tank. It'll take maybe double to empty it out because of the pressure of water coming out. The pressure of water going in is much higher than it's coming out through the faucets. So we just have to sit here and wait. Every few minutes, you know, you can go check the fresh water tank and I'll take you guys with me when I do check it. Once it gets to about one third full or empty, whichever way you want to look at it, that's when I'll go and uh, fill it back up. All right, so as you can see, the water heater is turned off. You want to check your fresh water tank now. It's still full and this water has been on for a little bit. So you just have to monitor it and play by ear. Sometimes when you fill it up, Sometimes the sensor can be clogged, maybe it's debris, maybe it's mold, maybe whatever's in there, you don't know. So you're gonna have to fill it up and empty it a full, few times so that you can clear those sensors. That should have went down already. Should have went down by a little bit, but before I did it, it was empty. Now it's reading all full. As you know, the sensors in these RVs are not too reliable. So what we try to do is flush out the black tank, flush out the both great tanks. That helps the sensors read more reliable but as you continue to put waste in them soap water from the dishes or bath water sometimes that soap scum gets on a sensor and at the black tank sometimes tissue gets on a sensor and it blocks the reading so it always going to read as full or wherever that clog or that not, it's not a clog wherever that debris that's on the sensor can be on level one level two level three or level four that's what your reading is going to be so by flushing the tanks you clear that debris or whatever's on that sensor block and like, from giving you the right reading. It seems like you learn a lot when you're on the road, but that's the only way to learn, I think. I mean, you can read and YouTube a lot of the things and you learn a lot that way, but you also learn a lot by going through a lot of these things on the road. So a lot of people tell you, camp in your driveway, try a lot of things in your driveway so it can make it a lot easier for you when you get on the road and that's the best thing to do. That's how we learned. We did it right in the driveway and we realized how many things we needed and what we didn't need. And then when we went out in the field, the first time that we boondocked, it was like, oh my God, we have to try to do all of these things. So that it was trial and tribulation. That's how we learned. Another thing that I'm gonna check and maybe change is the anode rod. So I'm emptying out the hot water tank so that I can release the pressure off that anode rod and I can take it out, check it, and I'm probably going to replace it. They say it's good to replace those things after a year or after two years. When we first started this camping season, I checked it and it was still everything in place, but this thing gets brittle and it can break apart into your hot water tank, so you don't want that. So it's best to just try to get it out of there beforehand and put the new one in. You can order those at Amazon, and I believe you get them in a two-pack and they're $19.99 each. I'm gonna put a link down in the description if you wanna order the ones that we had. These things all come in the same sizes and you have an anode wrench that you can use to get that anode rod out. Sometimes you can use pliers, sometimes you can use your hands, but once you put the water tape on it, it's gonna be hard to get out, so it's better to use an anode wrench to get the anode rod out. There the water goes. 10 minutes already passed. Excuse the mess, but this is how it is when you have a big family in an RV. You store food wherever you can store it. Okay, we're back in the bathroom to check the level again. We had two thirds now, so it's going down. Now there are different treatments that you can put in your tank when you're sanitizing or cleaning it out. I don't have any treatments, so what I do is I just lift up the water, add a lot of water, empty it out. Fill it up, empty it out. Some people put like a tablespoon of bleach, fill it up, empty it out, fill it up, empty it out. There's products from Amazon that you can buy. You want to put some in, fill it up, empty it out, fill it up, empty it out. That way that the fresh water tank is going to be clear. We don't drink out of the fresh water tank, let me keep reminding you. We take baths, we flush the toilets, we wash dishes, but we're not, we don't eat out of there. We don't drink out of it. Now, after you sanitize your fresh water tank, you are able to drink out of it. We just don't. If we needed to, we would. But to be comfortable, you just have to 
drain it, pull it up, drain it the same as you're cleaning your flat tank. When you're cleaning your fresh water tank, you just want to keep raising the water, draining it, raising it all the way up, draining it. That way you know that it's clear of any debris, clear of any mold. Because remember, down in that black tank, it's dark, it's moist, and that's the area for bacteria and mold to grow. So when you're lifting the water up and then you're draining it out, you're also lifting up all of that bacteria and all of that mold. So the multiple times that you do it, you're cleaning it out. So it will be safe to drink if you want to drink out of it. Now, if we were bone docking for weeks on end and we ran out of water, we would drink the water or boil it first, but we would drink the water. But to be safe, you want to fill it and drain it as many times as you can. We have another couple of days here in this campground, so we can do this process a couple of times before we pull up and leave for our boondocking adventure at Bald Eagle State Park. Now remember, a way that you know that the water tank, the fresh water tank is becoming empty, as you see the pressure changing of the water coming out. You'll see it start spitting, you'll see the flow decreasing. That's how you know that the water tank is almost empty. Now check the level again. And you see, it's empty now, so I'm gonna refill it. So I'm putting the hose back into the fresh water tank. And I'm coming back over to turn the water on. You can hear the water going in, but if you're not sure, you can take this out a little bit and you can see the water going in. Again, it's gonna be the same process. You're gonna wait for the water to fill up. You're gonna see it shooting out a little bit. Cut off the water. Let the rest of the water, the overflow come out. Close up the cap, repeat the process. And then your tank should be sanitized. Now, before you take out that anode rod, you wanna release the pressure. See the water coming out there? You're releasing the pressure. Getting ahead of myself a little bit there. Let's do one thing at a time. Because I just remembered if you're filling up that fresh water tank, that hot water heater is also gonna fill up. So release the pressure, the water just gonna keep gushing out. So you wanna finish the process of sanitizing first. And then once you empty, before you fill up again, you can change the anode rod. So we're gonna do that. All right, we let that last bit of water come out. That's just going down to the normal level. Of course, when you're driving, if you're driving with a full tank, you're gonna see it splashing out through this hole as you're driving. So you're gonna lose some water before you get to your boondocking destination. Again, we're gonna put the cap on because you don't want no bugs flying in there while you're emptying out the tank. And don't worry, it's a 90 degree day. So that water that's spilling out, it's just gonna evaporate before we come back outside because it's like 90 degrees. Look at me sweating out here. All right, the lines are already pressurized, so you're just gonna turn on the water. I heard the pump cut on as soon as I did that. But now you don't hear the pump at all. So now I'm just waiting for the fresh water tank to empty out this last time. Then I'll change the anode rod and then fill back up the fresh water tank. All right, to be safe, I'm gonna turn off the water pump. We emptied out the fresh water tank. Okay, now we're gonna release the pressure, but you're gonna see a lot of water coming out still. There we go. Not that much water, but you heard the air coming out. All right, you can use an anode wrench and a screwdriver. Flathead. Okay, once you fit the anode right in, you just put this through the holes there, and then you're gonna use both hands and loosen it up. Once you loosen it up, you're gonna see some water coming out. That's okay. You can check the status of your anode rod. This anode rod still looks a little good, but I'm gonna change it out anyway. See, this part is getting really thin. If that breaks off, that whole end is gonna end up in your hot water tank. Here's the new anode rod. Here's the new anode rod with the water tape on it, and we're gonna install it now. Let's put this right back in where you got it from. Of course, I'm gonna need two hands, so I'll be right back. Okay, that's your anode rod screwed back in with the water tape. Now we're going to fill up the fresh water tank again and see if it's not leaking. If it's leaking, we just have to tighten it up a little bit more. As we did last time, we checked to see if the water was going in. You can hear it going in. I don't know if you can hear it on camera, so I'm gonna take this out a little bit so you can see the water filling up. Then you take a step back, everything closed with the anode rod. You wanna make sure that that's not leaking. 
So as you can see, there's no water coming out. Okay, so that's everything in a nutshell. We sanitized our fresh water tank. We filled it up. We let it go down. We changed the anode rod. It badly needed changed. I'm lucky I caught it there. I didn't wait for another season to pass before I changed. I'm lucky I caught it there. But everything is done. We filled the fresh water tank back up. So now we're ready to hit the road when it's time for us to leave here. We still have two more days before we go boondocking but it's good to have everything done so I don't have to wait to the last minute to do it. Guys, remember, the apparel that I'm wearing, cups, hats, and more apparel is down in the store below. So check it out. You may see something that you like. If you see a design that's not available and a item that you want, just let me know. Throw me a comment on one of the videos, any of the videos, and I can change that for you right away. It takes two seconds. Look for us on Facebook. We're also on that platform where we show everyone where we're going to be, current events. So look for us on Facebook. Search Facebook groups, The Smalls RV Adventures. We're also on TikTok and Instagram. Our Patreon account is also active. So if you wanted to show your support for us there, head over to Patreon, look us up, The Smalls RV Adventures, and we're there. And if you like watching us on this platform and you want to hook us up by throwing some gas at our tank, that thanks button is right down below. That's what it's there for. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this video helped you. And until next time, see you later, everybody.